Okay. Chapter 8 is about volume and surface area. So, you will be required to remember the formulas and understand the question for you to answer successfully. Uh, some of these formulas you learned in grade 7 and grade 6. So, what I'm going to do about this chapter, I'm only going to review the formulas. After I review the formulas, the rest you will be working from the formula paper with your questions from the book. Okay? Now, so remember volume and surface area is about three-dimensional shapes. So I'm going to review all the lessons of this chapter in this video. So there'll be only one video for chapter eight. Okay. All right. So if I have a rectangular prism, a rectangular prism is like this bag, is like the classroom, is like the tissue box. See? Rectangular prism. This is a rectangular prism. How do we find? All volume formulas should start with base area times height. And the base of a rectangular prism, because of the name rectangle, will be a rectangle. So how do I find area of a rectangle? I do length times width. Now, since I want to find volume, I will add the height. So sometimes it will be written as length, width, and height. And if you don't see the sign in between, you know you're multiplying. And remember, your units will be units cubed. So if you don't put cubed, you'll be in trouble. So it will be either centimeters cubed, or meters cubed, or kilometers cubed, depending on the question. And if the question didn't give you units, you will write the word units cubed. All right. Now let's do for a cube. So we know that a cube is made of square faces. So the base is a square. So how do I find area of a square? Side times side. And the height is also made by a square. So that will be another S. So how do I write this? S cubed. Okay. And my units also will be cubed. or centimeters cubed or meters cubed like that okay let's do cylinder what is the base of a cylinder the base of a cylinder like this bottle is what a circle okay so how do I find area of a circle pi r squared height so that means I multiply pi times r times r times height. That's what that means. And I don't want you using pi as 3.14. You will come here. You will come here to your uh, calculator. You will press shift and you will press here is pi on your calculator. So every time you see pi, I want you to use this. Don't put 3.14. No, use whatever here. Okay? There will be rounding. So you have to practice on your rounding. Rounding to the nearest ten, to the nearest hundredth. This you have to practice. And then your answer will have units cubed. Okay? Meters cubed centimeters cubed millimeters cubed like that a uh, volume of a cone volume of a cone is the same as volume of a cylinder divided by three because a cone and a cylinder have uh because in a cone in a cylinder there is three cones okay so how do i know if i draw a cone so there's three of them. One, two, three. 
So that is why I know when I, div when I divide the volume of a cylinder by three, it will give me the volume of a cone as long as their height is the same and the diameter is the same. Okay? So volume of cone equals pi r squared height and then I have to divide by 3 pi times r times r which is radius r means radius times height and divide by 3 now how do I find radius so radius equals diameter divide by 2 so if the question draws a circle and gives you the full line, this is the diameter. So if you get the full line, you have to divide by 2 to get the R. As we are doing the questions, you will see. All right. Let's do volume of sphere. Volume of sphere is 4 times pi times R cubed divided by 3. So you will do 4 times pi times r times r times r you're going to divide by 3 okay hemisphere is half of a sphere so your sphere is like your tennis ball your basketball your soccer ball football anything that is looking like a ball that you kick yes like the globe, like the planets. All these are spheres, okay? And if you want to find their volume, this is the formula. Now, volume of hemisphere is half the volume of a sphere. So that is why I multiply the volume of a sphere times one half, which means I multiply two and three. So volume of a sphere Uh, I mean, 4 times pi times r cubed, we have to divide by 6, will give us the hemisphere. Okay? So another way of you writing this is 4 times pi times r times r times r. And what is r? r is radius. r is radius. Where do I write it? r means radius. When it is one, it is radius. When it is more than one, it is radii. Okay? So that's the formula for finding volume of a hemisphere. Remember this picture? Sorry, this paper? So get a paper like this. A, a plain paper. Put it uh, horizontally. Divide it into seven parts. And write these formulas. Because this paper will be important. You will need this for every lesson you do here in chapter 8. And then we need to discuss this before I continue. So uh, these shapes, rectangular prism, cube, cylinder, cone, sphere, hemisphere, triangular prism, and pyramid are what we are calling three-dimensional shapes because you need three values to describe the shape. You see here, I need the length, the width, and the height to describe the rectangular prism. Here, I need three sides to describe the cube. Here, I need, see, I need a radius, another radius, and a height. You need three values to describe the cylinder. And then, together with pi. So, since radius is the same, we are going to call it one. So, pi is one number, uh, radius is another number. Height is another number. All right. The same thing here. You need the pi, you need the radius, and the height to describe the cone. Okay? Same thing with the sphere. You need 4 over 3, you need pi, and you need the radius to describe the sphere. Uh, to describe the hemisphere, you need 4 over 6, you need pi, you need radius, and you need radius. To describe the hemisphere so all of these you need three values to describe them okay 
Now, there is three types of 3D shape. You have an open shape, you have a closed shape, or you have a hollow shape, okay? Now, the formula for finding volume, whether you're open, closed, or hollow, will be the same. It will not change. So if your rectangular prism is open, you will still do volume like this. If it is closed, you will still do volume like this. If it is hollow, you will still do volume like this. As you read the question, you will determine whether your shape is open or whether your shape is closed or whether your shape is hollow. The question will tell you, okay? Now let's do volume of triangular prism. When you want to find volume of the triangular prism, you will still do base area times height. It is a triangle at the base. There is a triangle at the base. So for you to find area of triangle, you will use half base times the height of the triangle. So you put height with a small t this height came from the triangle and then height the big h is the height of the triangular prism okay so this is at the bottom this is the whole this is the whole distance from one end to another of the triangular prism so this becomes base multiply height of triangle multiply height of the triangular prism divide by two okay how do i find the pyramid the pyramid there is two types of pyramid the one with a square base and the one with a rectangular base so so we will divide this by two so you will do square base if the base is a square and if the base is a rectangle. So if the base is a square, you will do side times side times side, sorry, times height, side times side times height, you're going to divide this by three. That will give you the volume of the pyramid if the base is a square. Square base. Rectangular base. If the base is a rectangle, then you will do length times width. And then the height of the pyramid. And then you divide by three. So these are the formulas that you will need to find volume. So part two will have the formulas for you to find surface area, okay?